I don't know if you guys follow her or know about her work. A super exciting person is going to come up on stage. Somebody I'm really stoked to meet. This is Sophia Rowe. So, Sophia is a New York native. We're in her neck of the woods. Why don't, yeah, why don't you just kind of give us the cliff notes? Who are you? Who am I? Well, I'm actually not, I wasn't born and raised in New York, but I've been here for like almost 10 years. I'm a chef. Um, and particularly, I work in the food access space, so that's my big thing. Um, I A little bit of background, just to kind of give context to what I actually do. Um, I was a foster care kid, so I've always been an urban kind of kid. Even though I'm not from New York, I've always been in a city. And um, as a foster care kid, you're just, you know, like you're not, you're definitely not around nature. Like, zero nature around. You're being passed around, group home. I didn't learn anything about anything. Um, and I never ate good food, never. So, of course, as, as with life goes, it's kind of like my greatest inspiration, right? Like it sucked that I had that life, but now it's like it inspires the work that I do. Um, and so I'm a chef, I've been a chef for 11 years. I used to be a restaurant chef. Um, now I am not, I work for myself. I used to work at 11 Madison Park, which is like the opposite of anything sustainable. The whole idea is that you're flying something in, like you wanna tell people like, this came from China, this came from Bhutan, this is Nepalese. Like, like the carbon footprint's crazy, but whatever, it's delicious. You know, like that's the narrative with that kind of eating. Now I do the opposite and probably 80% of the work that I do is with kids in food access in particular. Incredible, so, yeah. super cool. Yeah, yeah, I think so. <laughs> So um, one of the questions that I asked Pete, I'd love to ask you as well, That's is, absolutely. you know, access, mm -hmm. right? Like you and Pete certainly had a different childhood. Um, yep. I'm sure there were different hurdles and barriers to access. What yep. is something that connected you with nature that kind of opened your eyes and what's something that you found um, is, an, is an effective kind of pathway for, for people to get outside in the city here? I mean, it's definitely food. Food is like the thing for me. That's the sort of connecting that gets me in nature. And I think people forget that like food and nature, because listen, I think like kayaking, like surfing, that stuff is so gnarly. I love it. So awesome. But not everybody's a kayaker, right? Not every, like I can't get like my cool inner city kids. They're like kayaking. No, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, like kids are, kids really get into the farming thing. They really do like more than you'd think. Um, so I like to start really, really young. So if you go to like a Bronx elementary school, talk about access. Some of these kids have never seen a tomato. It's not, they've never, seen it they have no idea that tomato sauce comes from tomatoes like simple and I everybody here is I mean I'm sure that we've all like lucky enough to like to know about tomatoes but we're lucky enough to know where things come from in that way but a lot of kids don't especially especially in the inner city um, so I think that yeah my background was kind of it was really tough but um, when I decided to quit I got super bad burnout as many chefs do um, I was I was a woofer for a while. I lived on an, uh, yeah, you know about woofing, right? Um, so I lived on a bed and breakfast and I worked at uh, Blue Hill Stone Barns and I just lived on the farm, like basically. I was like slept in a yurt sometimes, like it was awesome. Um, but that really got me sort of centered away from the kitchen and into like the dirt in a way that was really, really beautiful. Um, and you know, crop cycling and a uh, livestock farmer is essentially a grass har farmer, you know? Like they, they're the health of the cows, the health of the grass. And if we're eating cows, then that's also, then the grass is also important, right? Because we're eating the cow. Like that sort of cycle um, was, was really what got me so interested. And it's so easy to translate that with kids. Like more than anything, it's almost like when parents ask me, how do I get kids to eat vegetables? I'm like, you let them cook. Like kids love to participate. And if you, a kid is gonna get their hands involved, they're not gonna not eat it because they made it, they're proud of it. You will have all the kids in the world eating all the kale in the world if they grow it themselves. Like to plant a seed and it grow, it's like, are you kidding me? That's so, that's so delicious to a kid. You know, so like for me, the idea of nature is 100% food driven. And I also think it's the easiest way to talk to youth about nature. So for somebody who's living in New York City and, and say that connection with soil, that connection with food, if maybe that's the vehicle, where would somebody go? to have, to make that connection, to have that experience? Like what, in your, yeah. like any tips, any 
Yeah. I got some tips. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that there's, like, I love it. Like, I love the idea of getting out of the city. And that, again, that's, I mean, I talk about it all the time how, like, vacation is probably one of the least sustainable things that people do. Even when people are watching their consumption, when they're going on vacation, they're, like, having, they're doing a little more single use than they normally would. Like, they're, you know, it's like you're on vacation. And um, so, obviously, I think this is really awesome because it's sort of like this is a way that you can go on vacation in a really sustainable way. Like I, the idea of hip camp, I'm obsessed with it. It's actually crazy. I'd never heard of it I, under a rock before Charles came to me, which is almost embarrassing. I'm so sorry. Um, but it is for me, it's a really exciting thing for kids um, because it's a way for a lot of these kids um, to their, you know, access. They don't have a lot of money. We're in food apartheid. I live in bed Broadway Junction bed I don't live. There. Listen, it is liquor stores. It is pawn shops, and that's on purpose, right? Like, this is what we're dealing with here. A lot of these kids have not had the privilege to go to summer camp. They'll never have the privilege to go to summer camp. So I feel like we're all in a position where we're privileged to be able to hear and be able to talk about it. So we should be in a position where, like, I want to do something about it. So you can so easily go to any school. I am a regular girl. I'm not an organization. I'm just a, I'm my own business. And I said, I want to talk about food access at the Bronx High School. They were like, will you please? Begged me. Go, so I did once a week. I went to the Bronx High School and we made grow boxes. They had a shop class. We made grow boxes. Now we have a farm. And these kids, first off, I don't think anyone's ever been so excited to see me. Like they were so, they were so excited. Like, oh, soaps here. We're going to like grow cucumbers, whatever. Um, so I think that you can create it. There's this idea that like, I love, it's around. You can totally get out of nature. But nature sometimes is literally like, it's, I mean, sometimes it's a nursery. But the idea is that they're seeing dirt, right? They're seeing seeds. They're seeing that. And I think that's the story that you really need, that kids need to hear. Um, it's not so much about like getting away all the time. So small, like small, you can donate your time your, in your space. You know, I think that that, um, and education, you know, like, you know, if you know all about seeds and you know all about tomatoes, you think it's no big deal these kids don't know anything. And their parents are working five jobs and it's a luxury to have a Metro card. You know what I'm saying? So um, I think that the biggest thing you can do is just understand there's a problem and donate your time. That's huge. Yeah, I think so. So we had a conversation the other day and you were kind of like looking through hip camp and you realized that one of the farms that you worked on or? Well, it's just one of my favorite farms, okay. Lenny Farms. It's actually on the app, which is so so like I love the idea that there's um, you know you're on a farm and you're camping and what do you need to bring your own food for right that's like a cost so I think the whole like it's like you know like nothing is linear right but the whole like non-linear aspect of like I'm on a farm and I'm cooking and like I have this idea I was thinking about it like you know we go camping with our friends right but it's like for me this is all this is a really like delicious thing I use food words to describe things I know that's shocking but it's a really scrumptious idea for me because I'm like okay well maybe I'll get like six kids together and we'll go foraging on this farm you know like we get permission slips from their parents and it's a way for them to actually see People get excited about things when they're around things. And these kids, are a lot of times, their nature is the J train, you know? Mine too, but you know what I'm saying? Like, that's like as far as it goes for them. So I think that, you know, being able to like know that I know Lundy Farms, I know the people at Lundy Farms, they're on hip camp. It's like $25 a day. I can get six kids out there. So I think that utilizing the app in a way that's not even necessarily family is really special. Like, well, who's to say you can't have wrangle together 10 kids if it's $15 a night and they're sleeping in, this sleeping in tents. Like, this is, this is fun, you know? And I personally, like, I want, especially like these young, um, these young black kids that are, that don't really have access to anything else. Like, maybe they do like kayaking, dude. Like, I don't know, you know? Like, I mean, like, you can listen to Travis Scott and go kayak. Hacking, you know so like you know like I just want for me like I just want these young black kids and black girls in particular and, I, and the reason I say that is because they're the ones that are not exposed to nature and are so excited about it you know and ancestrally like they they come from nature you know like these kids are nature in their bloodline you know so it's so important for me to create access for them and this is a really great way to do it because it's right there you know and essentially it's like basically free like 20 it's 25 bucks like a day for you to like wrangle together seven kids you know and teach them how to like live on a farm for a day like how gnarly is that it's so awesome so how far away is that so it's like mm, it's like two and a half hours but it's like you know I, I don't know i think like i have a car like it's if all you have to do is get there 
it's you know like it's the, it's the easiest thing in the world and you know like again i just challenge people to look at camping differently camping yeah you do it with your family but why not use like i am so privileged to be but i don't have kids i don't have a husband i don't have a person so why not like take why not take seven kids and like have an experience and also as a chef right teaching people how to cook in that way i mean that's like the clo the closest thing to nature for me is like cooking in nature it's like it's like the most fun thing in the world oh my god i feel like my caveman self it's so awesome right it's like oh it's so i know like fire it's so gnarly um I, I love it i love it so much so i do i do feel like it's a lot easier than what we want to believe that it is. Whether it's you're taking kids to the nursery or you're like donating yourself or a weekend of your time. You like how hard is it to take you and your best friend and like five kids? Maybe they're your friend's kids. Help help your friends out because they need a break from those kids. <laughs> take them to the take them to take, right. Take them to hip camp. Let the let out. Right. That's what I'm saying. You know. You know. And like when they go to bed, you have like a beer or six, and then you know, <laughs> and then it's you know. So it can be fun for you too. So I. I just challenge people to look at food more in line with nature and not just nature, rock climbing. I love all that stuff. That stuff is great. And like, I also love that you're from T Montana. Montana is probably like my favorite state ever. I was a private chef for a while and I would fly into Bozeman all the time. So love it. It's amazing. There's the closest traffic we have in Montana is probably Calgary or Salt Lake. <laughs> yeah. We always kind of trip out on that. Yeah, no, I know. Salt Lake. <laughs> I think so. So... Would you say, you know, coming from the food space, like, is this whole, like you talked about that those restaurants have this huge carbon footprint, they're flying ingredients really in, bad. there's that pride around that, but is there this shift for local, for like keeping dirt on the kale, like yeah. things grown nearby? I think it's a shift from the consumer. See, you guys have all the power. And it's, and I say it like, again, you have all the power. If you are wanting more storyteller driven food, then you have to ask for it. You know, and I think that there's a shift and people aren't caring about Michelin stars. Thank God, because it doesn't mean anything. Ultimately, it's the, the story with your food. Who is making your food? How is how is your food being sourced? Um, how is it being harvested? I mean, we care about those things and not in like a woo woo kind of way, but like in an actually no, I'm like, I'm curious kind of way. Like, I want to know the story. I want to support these farmers. Oh, I can go to their farm. You know, I think that people want that more. And especially like, I think social media has helped out with that too. You have access to, you're like, wow, I can go to the Lundy Farms Instagram. You know, I can actually eat my meal and instead of maybe tag the restaurant, tag the farm, you know? And I, I think we think social media is silly, but that is so good for these farmers. Especially like I'm at the farmer's market three times a week, religiously. These farmers need all the press they can get. They are the ones literally making tomatoes taste good. They are doing it. You want to know what an heirloom tomato is? Like farmers make them like with their hands and the wind, the wind in their hands. That's that's how heirloom <laughs> tomatoes are made, you know? So I, I do think it's like... It's definitely changing and shifting. And I think it's because of us. You know, we're not, you know, we don't want to pay $375 for a dinner and not even remember what we ate, you know, which I, I would hear that narrative a lot. And it's a big reason why I didn't want to work in that space anymore. Like, I think even food writers like, you know, the late Jonathan Gold, I mean, he's he made the San Gabriel Valley kind of what it is. It's this beautiful area in Los Angeles, which is such a crazy food city um, where it's all this ethnic food that nobody really cared about. People really just stayed in. But it's it's kind of wild. Like now people care about San Gabriel Valley and that those it's almost like a, it was like a rural community. And now people are going in. These people are making more money. So it's the same kind of thing. You know, you just it's a consumer. Well, and I mean, just thinking about Pete and Billion Oyster Project, I mean, Fisher's Island, how far away is Fisher's Island as the crow flies? So, I mean, it's amazing. Yeah. You're getting this yeah. protein, this food that's coming into the city, mm -hmm. local, you know, raised in the waters that are flowing just offshore. Like people, like how you want that. You want that more than some like weird foie gras, like these crazy, like weird tomatoes that were flown in. You're like, okay, like I, it's cool. I get it. But now people are mindful. It's kind of like, it's the same with like the avocado thing. And please don't hate me. But like these organic avocados from New Zealand guys, I'm just saying they're from New Zealand. You know what I mean? Like what like, uh, you know, and like people want to know why Mexico produce tastes so good. It's because from Mexico, they've never had refrigeration. If you put your tomatoes in the refrigerator, we're not friends. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's it. Like, you know, like, of course it tastes good. There's no refrigeration. These things are just completely harvested. They come from like literally around the block, you know, and end up on your plate. That's why we love Mexican food so much because it's so fresh because it came from Mexico, you know?
So where are some places that you get your food that you like to cook with that are local? Well, I always, always, always go to farmer's market. My One of my favorite farms actually ever is Green Thumb Farm. It's in the Hamptons. It's kind of like, mm, I know the Hamptons, you like, ugh, I roll. But they're really wonderful people. And it's actually really great. They have like tomato farm. You can be like, hey, can I pick my own tomatoes? And they're like, please, we're busy. And they just give you like containers and you go pick your own tomatoes. It's, it's incredible. And for me, I always think, the Hamptons is kind of one of those things like, oh, it's the Hamptons. But if you do the farm experience Hamptons, it's a totally different Hamptons than like what you're thinking. Whatever you're thinking, don't think that. This is different. <laughs> <laughs> this is silly different. Um, I also love, I love Wayne Scott Farms. They are actually always at Union Square. I mean, and you know, if you know Union Square Farmer's Market, right? One thing you can definitely do is you can definitely ask the farmers, hey, What's your name? What do you like? Do you mind if I taste this? Please ask. Don't ever just taste anything, but definitely ask. What can I use this with? What do you think about this and this combination? Um, I think that 99% of the time we go to the farmer's market and just take pictures. And you're like, oh, this is so beautiful. But what are these beans? I've never seen these before. But you don't buy them. I think it's important to ask questions. Understand what you're eating, what the season is. We think eggplant's in season year round. Guess what? Eggplant, it's already over already done so if you see an eggplant it's just the leftovers like the best time to have eggplant is in the summer people don't even know that right so ask communicate these are all the things that hopefully if you were going to go do a hip camp experience on a farm you would that's the idea you know like you're it's going to mean a lot more to you if you have more information and education than if you just like you know we're we're in 2020 almost like we can just buy watermelon in december if you do that we're also not friends but i'm just saying you know like we're in a place where we can do that and i think that that's a problem we do not need to be doing that so Again, it's an education thing. Every single farmer that is at Union Square, whether you're on Mon you know, whether you go on a Monday or whether you go on the weekend, before you buy anything, please ask questions. Please talk to them. They are dying to connect. And a lot of them, this is their life. They like their life is being a farmer, you know, and they're struggling. A lot of them don't have help. Donate your time and your help. Like I was a woofer and people were like, you want to, you want a woof? And I'm like, yeah, I want a woof. And they're like, God, what, get to business then. You know, <laughs> like these are, they need so, 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 so much help. So again, this idea too, it's like, who's to say if you didn't make a great connection at a farm with at hip camp where you couldn't go every weekend and help out, you know, which I think is also a delicious idea. <laughs> Sophia, thank you so much. That was awesome.